All right, so we are still in this video lesson learning about how to calculate the volume of a solid that is generated by rotating a given region around a given axis. And by saying we are still learning how to find uh, or how to calculate the such volume, I mean that uh, I intend to say that this video that you are viewing here should be viewed after you have seen my other, my earlier video lecture about uh, how to apply the disk method, okay? And so the disk method that we have learned earlier in the earlier video lecture has already solved a lot of problem on, on those kind of solids that, uh, that came out as, uh, as a rotation of a given region around an axis. But sadly, as problems, as problems keep becoming more advanced and more advanced, and that's the reason why we arrive at this particular lec lecture here or lesson here that allows us to learn a a technique that is even more suitable for the for the more advanced kind of problem, okay? And so, so now, needless to say, the, it is still strictly uh, required that this lesson must be learned. Uh, this must be viewed after you have seen, after you have learned what a definite integral is, and it must be viewed after you have learned uh, about the fundamental theorem of calculus, the second part, because uh, that is the. the the main, those are the, are the two lectures that, that become the main tool of how I use uh, for solving any of these problems as we're doing here. Okay, and so now allow me to introduce with the idea here that, that promotes the situation. So, so now we have learned earlier in the disk method, in the disk method we have learned earlier that uh, we can have a region. So it's just a little flashback right there. So we have a region that in our case that I introduced in a disk method, then we simply think about having a curve, and then the curve is being restricted in, a, uh, in between a, a certain uh, two values, between a start and an end, and then the, there's an area that's bounded between the curve and a given axis. Okay, and then we, from that region there, we're gonna take the region and rotate. And so the stripe going through the region and perpendicular with the rotation axis here, and we can go either the x-axis or the y-axis for a lot of region, but here in, in this specific uh, sp specific case right here, I was I'm drawing the, the rotation that's about to be rotated around the x-axis, and so there we had a disk, okay, and so that's the the idea of the, the 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 disk method that we have seen earlier. But then, so here's the thing that so we have that's that still that generality remains here in this lecture that we're about to do. But now let me navigate to the other board and, and introduce the, the, the more advanced kind of situation, the, the kind of uh, situation that evolves so that it needs us to you know, bring up new technique, new method to handle the problem. So it's still about we having a region. But now what about this time right here? The region is even more, a little more complicated. And the region here is not necessarily now unlike the case of the disk method, the region, the region has a straight edge, as I mentioned at the end of the disk method right here, the region that we're rotating, and that, that we're rotating, and, and we can successfully use the disk method to find the, the, the volume, the, that those kind of regions has to have a, a straight edge boundary where the rotation axis comes right through that, okay? Or the rotation axis aligns exactly with that so that when we're creating that rotation right there, then each stripe through the region becomes a, a disk with a certain thickness, dx right there, okay? But now, the only similarity, I mean, the, the only generality that remains in this problem here is we're still having a region. And from this same region here, we are going to take that and rotate that around a given or a chosen axis, okay? But now you can see that in a way how I'm drawing this region here, then we are no longer, we are no longer, um, we are no longer having any, it's no longer required, it's no longer having, necessarily having a, a straight edge boundary anymore. And you can see that my region here is, is uh, bent all over, and as a matter of fact, it's, it's looped around so that it becomes a, a closed region, okay? So there we have a region. So I just now pointed out the difference between the region that we're doing here and the region we were, those kind of regions we were doing back in the disk method. But now, still, the same fundamental happens here. Let's say for a region like this, for a region like this, I can decide to rotate that around, I'm gonna take that region and rotate that around 
we can choose, we can choose, or the problem can choose for us. The problem can come up for us that, hey, the region here, let's find the volume of that solid created by rotating this region around the x-axis, around the x-axis, okay? And then the same region here, now at the, with the same region, we can also, there can be also a problem to ask us to rotate the same region here around the y-axis. And there, now I am not saying that it will become the same solid, nope, it's, it, you gotta make it clear, the same region, it could be always the same region, but rotating around the x-axis or rotating the, around the y-axis can come up with different solids right there. But that's the generality of these kind of problems. And the major difference I can see here is that the axis, the axis of rotation no longer aligns with that, uh, that straight edge boundary. And as a matter of fact, there's no longer a straight edge boundary anymore in the region here. That's the kind of generality. And, and that's the kind of, uh, that's what I was m mentioning earlier, that the kind of problem becomes uh, more advanced, more challenging for us right there, in, in, in that sense. Right there. Okay, but now we will learn that from a solid technique to, to handle the problem. So, admittedly, the region, the region I brought up here is a little too challenging, actually. But ultimately, the goal is to ev eventually be able to handle even with very complicated region and very complicated and very irregular region like this. Okay, but now, so much uh, complicated uh, things going on here. We can, now I'm going to get back to my other board, erase out this picture, and I can construct a, an easier situation. And we're gonna use that as our start of the, of, the, of the method I'm about to introduce here. And then once you have that core understanding, then we are going to be, and w once you have all that uh, generality drawn out from, from, the, from the kind of problem I'm about to introduce here, then we should be able to push that into that uh, kind of complicated region as I put on the other board, okay? And so for simplicity, let's get started really with a problem as following. Let's say we have a, a curve, okay? It could be bent, it could be straight, okay? And then there's another curve, okay? We have a curve and we have another curve. And then now, or the other curve doesn't have to be, so some of the curve can be bent, some of the curve can be straight, but the idea now we have two curves, okay? And two curves could be crossing each other and they form an enclosed or they form a bounded area. Okay, there we have our region. So it's just the simplest case like that. And so out of that region that came out as a, a region bounded by the two given curves, the two given curves, and now once we created our region, then each of the curve here that that bounds our region, it's each of the curve here becomes a, a boundary, or all together, this is one boundary, but see the whole boundary of the region here comes out from intersection of uh, multiple curves, okay? And then, now we put the axes on, and now we can have a clear sense that a region like this does not necessarily have to, to uh, I mean, it does have, I'm not lying, it does, admittedly, it looks like it does have a, a straight edge, but does, that should not a matter, that, that should not what we be looking for. Okay, the point now is that with a region like this, and that's going to be completely the, sort of like a being separated away from any one of the axes here. And now I want to take that region. Think about first choice here. If we are, if the problem tells us, if the problem asks us to rotate this region around the x-axis, okay, let's see what's going to happen with a region like that. Okay, and so allow me to bring it on screen with my uh, computer simulation right here. All right, and so on our computer screen here, let's look at uh, the two curves as following. And at this starting point right here, and no one needs to worry about what curves these are. So we have two curves. And so now two curves immediately cross each other and create an area, a, re a region here bounded between the two curves. This is the curve where I have the two, um, this is the area where it's enclosed by the two curves right here. Okay, and as a matter of fact, this is shading that happens. Okay, this shading here is indicating that the, it's the, the region we're looking at is here, it's being enclosed by the two curves, the crossing of the two curves. And now with this region right here, okay, 
And I'm going to show just the restriction of the curve right there. So it looks like the curve here has a start, it has an end, I mean the, the region here. And then I'm going to just show only the portion of the region that's, that's being in completely enclosed by the curve, by the two curves here that we have. All right, and now here we are at a 3D uh, version of that region right here. So you can imagine that this is our X axis, this is our Y axis, and the, the third axis for the 3D setting is here, in the, uh, that's pointing this, this way right here as my mouse cursor is pointing it. But so this same region right here, and at this point, again, as I said, no one is required to know, no one, ne is, no one needs uh, to know what, what the two curves that define this region in blue is. But now think about it, we are rotating this region around the x-axis. Let's see what happened. Okay, and so now rotating that region around the x-axis, observe the moment right here, ob observe the motion right here. All right, so we have a region like that. Okay, all right, so it looks like a kind of cup, but there's a, there's the, now we have to notice the, the part right here that looks kind of green right here is actually the empty space. The real volume that is in the blue and, and being rotated. Oh, okay. And so that's how, I mean, that's the kind of picture that we, we become, that's the kind of solid that we become once we rotate our region, okay? Once we rotate our region there, okay? So now let's say I'm only rotating it halfway, for example, okay? So here, the, the, the part that's being solid is here, and the, that part is down here, okay? And this is empty space inside of that, okay? And now, what happened if we're rotating that same region? Okay, the same region here, what's happen, what would happen if we're rotating that around the, the y-axis? And let's uh, see some, some, what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to be rotating it. All right, I'm rotating it around the x, I mean the y-axis here. And as I'm creating it, it's becoming a picture like that. Okay, and now let me undo that to only about halfway so that we can see what the picture looks like when we're rotating about half of that. So the real solid that has volume is here, is inside of that, between the two curves, but anywhere outside of that, that's an empty space right there. Okay, and so that's the story of this region once we're rotating it. Okay, that's the region once we're rotating it. And so, and of course, when my, in my the picture over here, I put the, the, the y-axis, the vertical axis, kind of right here, but that does not uh, violate any of the generality. So now I have to get back on the I have to get back on the board here, and investigate that a little, even a little further. Okay. Okay. So now the generality I see here. This is the region. This is the region, and so there are a couple of things that we can still do the same. We can still do the same the, the thing as we have applied back in the disk methods in a sense that in our region here. In our region here, we can think about uh, if we chose, if the problem chose for us to rotate this region around the x-axis, or if the x-axis is given as the rotation axis, so we've learned all that term back in the disk method. So if we're rotating this region around the x-axis, then again, we have to imagine at start, at the starting point, we have to imagine that we need to draw, we need to draw stripes through, we need to draw a stripe, or we need to place a stripe through the region. But make sure that stripe, once it hits to the rotation axis, it's, make sure that stripe is perpendicular to the, the rotation axis. So the rotation axis is here, okay? And we will definitely draw stripes that is perpendicular we draw stripes that are perpendicular to the rotation axis here and through the region. Okay, but now in this case right here, you can see that unlike the picture, unlike the picture we've had in, in the disk method, here's the kind of picture we have here once we're rotating this stripe. So once we're rotating the stripe, now allow me to put dotted here because this part of the stripe is actually outside so the stripe is only really only here. Eat this part of the stripe is only sort of like a, a way to make it out to the, the, the rotation axis. But this part of the stripe, I put that in dot simply because really it's not there. The real part of the stripe is only here. The real solid stripe is only here. 
or in other words, in order for the stripe to hit to the x-axis, I actually see this as the stripe must cross through a boundary. Now it starts from this boundary, but it has to, the stripe has to cross through a, another boundary of the region in order to hit to the rotation axis. That's how I'm seeing it. And, and again, you can check with me on the same exact picture over here. If I draw another stripe, okay, and try to make my way to, to make the stripe hit the, the rotation axis. Because the stripe always need to be perpendicular with the rotation axis. And once we draw the stripe like that through the region, and of course the part here outside, and I keep saying outside of region, there's a part of the stripe being outside of the region. Okay, then now look back at the stripe itself. See, the stripe has to go through, I mean has to cross through a boundary of the region to hit to, to, uh, to, to reach to the rotation axis. Okay, and so now in that way how we're seeing the picture right here, then now what's going to happen once we're rotating that picture, once we're rotating that region right here, then think about at each stripe. I'm talking about think about at each stripe right here. Say for example at this particular stripe, what kind of picture are we getting here? Now, this point is actually closer. That's so, and in the way it is, needless to say, there's always in the on the same stripe, on the same stripe, there's always a point closer to the axis, okay? And there's always a point further out from the axis, okay? See, and the point closer to the axis is always the point where the the, the, the stripe is crossing through the boundary, whereas the further point, the further point is the point where it just simply stops at the outer boundary of the region. Okay, so and so now the, once we are rotating that, then the, the point from, from where the rotation axis to the point where the, the stripe crossed the, the boundary here, then we, we also have a circle. Okay, but then from where this further point, still on the same stripe, it's on the same stripe, further point and closer point, further and closer, I mean from in, in respect to the, the rotation axis, okay? And so the further point on the same stripe, once rotated, we are also going to uh, uh, reach to getting a, another circle. So these two are concentric circles, okay? These two are concentric circle, there's an inner circle and there's an outer circle, okay? Is that the same nature? Is that the same truth with any other stripe? Well, let's find out. Think about, start pushing your imagination right here. So uh, if we're rotating this, okay, there's, this, is, this point here on the same stripe, this point here is closer to the x axis or to the rotation axis generally. So as we're rotating it, we're getting a picture like this, okay? And then from the outer point right here, from the point that is further away from the rotation axis in the center here, rotating that, we're also going to get a, another circle, but this time an outer circle. All right, that's how I'm seeing it. And so now you can start pushing your imagination. Think about, see, we can have another imaginary part right here. That's Let's run like this, okay? And this region, once rotated, it will become something like this. All right, so here's the other part of the region. So this is the solid part right here, the part that being filled in. And then, and then, so now, same rule and same generality with the, the disk method you have learned, you are going to place your eyes here to look straight at the, to look right into the, the rotation axis. So in this case right here, the rotation axis comes out right at our eyes like this, and that solid is being rotating around our axis. So or if I'm facing the camera this way, okay, or I'm facing the, the, the students, the viewers of my, the, to this lesson, then the, the x axis that we chose is facing right at my face. So the rotation goes like this, okay? But that means, imagine, that means now in front of my eyes, I'm not seeing a disc. There's an inner circle, there's an outer circle, and really the, the space is in between the two circles. Okay, so now my picture does admittedly get a little too much, but if I'm, so, at any stripe, there's an inner circle and an outer circle. Okay, and, uh, and uh, the rotation axis come out as my pencil stripe like this. Okay, and 
the piece of the stripe, the piece of the stripe, the solid piece of the stripe that's being rotated is indeed inside here. Okay, so that we, so that this picture here indeed it creates for us a what so-called in common term. This is actually a a washer. So instead of a disc in front of us, now there's a washer. Now the inside space right here is actually empty. This space right here, where am I pointing? My arrow is pointing to that's empty. So we have empty space, and there's an area here between there's the outer disk and there's the inner disk. So that area is the only thing that matters for us. Right there is what we actually see. Okay, and so now just like that, see. And the washer this time, the washer does get bigger or get smaller depending on how we are wherever we put our stripes at. Okay, and so now allow me to turn away from this. Uh, Rotation around the x-axis, but I'm going to retain the exact same picture. Okay. Just now, how you have seen, as how you have already seen that with my computer animation, with my computer simulation, there. Okay. There's our x-axis is here. Our Region is here, okay, and uh, this is the shaded region bounded between the two curves. So the, and a lot of times the two curves uh, cross each other, de de define for us a, a region bounded between. So now we can take that region and this time rotate that around the y-axis. I just now realized I, I put this a little too far away from rotation axis. I mean, there are problems where it's quite far away from rotation axis, but I'm running out of more space right here. So allow me to move, uh, allow me. And, and in the end, we're still just talking about a general case right there. So it doesn't hurt to, uh, to bring the, the axis of rotation, the rotation axis, a little closer. Okay, so this time, imagine that if you are given a problem, if anyone is given a problem where the same region here is the exact same region as we have seen in the earlier case, but now this region is being rotated around the y axis, the vertical axis here. Okay. And so, so now, just like, so at this point you can see that I have a great advice for anyone. Bring as much experience as you have done in your, as you have seen or have learned through your disk methods. Bring as much of those uh, in here as possible. Okay, so I could have also mentioned earlier that when you were, when you were rotating around the x-axis, those washers, yes, needless to say, they are, Perpendicular, your washers are supposedly perpendicular to the, the rotation axis. So just like that, now when we take that nature right there and rotating that, so now I'm going to imagine again that I'm going to, in the same region here, I'm going to draw any stripe, I'm going to place a stripe, I'm going to place a stripe, any stripe through the region. The stripe is, of course, start out inside the region, but I'm going to draw the stripe so that the stripe will be reaching to the, our rotation axis right there. And another rule, again, the stripe here needs to be perpendicular with our rotation axis, in this case, uh, which is in this case the y axis right here. Okay, and so now you can see again very same, the very same situation that we've had when we were rotating this region around the x axis. This stripe here. There's a part of the stripe that's being outside of the region, so allow me to dot that, okay? So I'm only dotting it, okay? I'm only dotting it. All right, so let's have it dotted that way. All right, so some part of the, the stripe is outside of the curve, and some part of the stripe is still inside the, you know, the the region right here, and I, I might have accidentally see, see, accidentally say curve, but I mean some part of the stripe is still in the inside, the interior of the of the region, whereas some other part right here, because now, so some other part is is outside of, of the the region. So because now the stripe again has to just like how I explained earlier, the stripe here, in order for the stripe to reach to the rotation axis, it has to cross through a boundary, one of the boundaries. It's not crossing here, it stops right there, but it's crossed through this boundary here. All right, and so in that way, again, 
Now imagine if we're rotating it in the same stripe right here. See? And same similarity right there. The exact same similarity. On, on this same stripe, there will definitely be a point that's closer to the rotation axis. And there's a point that is further out from the rotation axis. Okay? And so in that way, ro in rotating it, we will have a what's so called now the point from where the rotation axis here reach out to that point closer to it. Rotating that, we will have an inner circle. Okay? And then from the rotation axis here reaching out to the further one right here and rotating that, we will create for ourselves on that particular stripe, we will create a, a further, I mean an outer circle. Okay? And again, just like how I was explaining that but the, since the, 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 like the earlier lecture about the disk method, and just now I talked about when we were doing that with the x-axis here, now even now when we are rotating our region around the x-axis, I mean around the y-axis, and even if any stripe here is perpendicular with the y-axis, we're still, the rule here, we, we're always putting our eyes uh, to look right into the rotation axis. So in this, this case, imagine the rotation axis is this vertical pencil of mine right here, and I'm looking down to that, okay? And so all the rotation goes like this right around me and right in front of my eyes like that, okay? And so now I'm seeing again, in front of my eyes, there's, it, the shape here is no longer, a sh uh, no longer a disk because there's empty space in here. There's empty space in here. There's, there's the solid area is here between this, the outer circle and the inner circle. That part right here is uh, some definite area. Okay, and so as a matter of fact, that is the shape again, and we call it it's a washer. Okay, we call it it's a washer. Okay, but in the end, it's washer or disk. In the end, what I'm seeing here, those stripes, as a generality from ever since from disk methods to now those stripes, once rotated, they will become a cross section for us. And so we have seen the shape previously in a disk method, the, the cross section became a disk. And that's why the method there was a disk method. And now I'm about to reveal that name right there, but uh, how about uh, allow me to wait until the, sort of like the end of that. But uh, see, once we're rotating the stripe, this time we're no longer creating the shape being a disk. It's still circular, but it's no longer a disk. It's a, a disk with a punch in the middle, okay, or a, a puncher disk. So in other words, well, people call that in common term, it's a, it's, a, it's a washer. There's an empty space, and these are the two concentric circles. There's an inner circle, and there's an outer circle. Okay, and so that's the idea right there. That's the idea of getting into it. But then in the end, doesn't matter which way you're rotating. Eventually, each of your cross section here has to have a Thickness. So if you're placing your stripes or if you're placing your washers uh, perpendicular with the y-axis because we're here in this drawing right now rotating around the, the y-axis, then your, the thickness is this big right here. Or it can, it can keep even getting thinner and thinner. The point is now the thickness at this point of, of your learning, the thickness is just simply an infinitesimally thin amount of change on whatever the, 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 the axis of rotation. So just like that, okay, so now if I draw my stripe vertically, if I draw my stripe to be, or if I'm rotating, if the, the, the region here was rotated around the, the x-axis, okay, if around the x-axis, then so, okay, rotating it, we have a picture like this, okay, just like that, and so the thickness is how much change the infinitesimally small or thin change in, in the, in the x-axis, in that case right there. Okay, so we're going to take all that, that generality right there and move on. And now I'm going to start taking you into an actual example problem right there. And then we're going to utilize that idea. Okay, so now, at the end of everything, before we really get into an actual example, that one fundamental I brought up earlier, now I'm bringing it up again. Doesn't matter which axis we are rotating. In the end, we are creating for ourselves a, a cross surface which has a, a, an area where we can define, I mean, where we can come up with a way to, to determine that area. But then more, in, uh, more in, 
more the importantly, it has a thickness. Okay. There's thickness. This part right here is called the cross section. Okay. Because we see we're placing our eyes to look straight at it, so it's, it looks like it's a cross section right here. We slice through it. Okay. And so now, in that way, the same fundamental that I brought up in the, this method, and now I'm using that same fundamental again. And, and I'm using that same fundamental throughout a lot of other problems right here. And I have to remind anyone viewing this video an integral is accumulation. An integral is accumulation. Okay? And so here's what I'm accumulating. You see, any of my disks right here, I have thickness with some cross section. And the cross section, we can actually find the area of the cross section. And so what I'm doing here is on, for, on, on each of my cross section here, on each of my washers here, and the point now is that we're going to have a lot of washers. See, there's a washer at the bottom here. OK? And there's, there's a, as we move up the curve, there's another washer. There's infinitely many washers that, that we're going through like that. OK? But now, at, at any washer, we have, generally, it's a cross section. OK? So we can always take the cross section's area, or the area of the cross section. Multiply with the thickness. That's the generality that I was introducing back in the days, or back in the lecture where I was doing the the uh, the disk method. And now it's that exact same same fundamental is still here. Okay, so the cross section area times the thickness right here, and I'm accumulating because each one of this now before accumulating, before accumulating, just this product here is the volume of one washer. So a washer, like in this picture right here, a washer, the area is like that. This is the area of the washer. The rotation axis is here. This is the area of the washer. But each area, each washer here has a thickness. And the point is, those thickness keep getting thin. And it's, it, they are infinite, testimony thin thickness. Okay, see? Area times thickness. That's the volume of one washer. Okay, and then as we've had, and see, that's the thickness right there. And as we have uh, found, as we have found a general regulation of our thickness, I mean, of our volume of one washer. Now I'm going to be accumulating all washer from a start okay, to an end. That's the plan right there. And this is the only fundamental that that. Uh, this is the only fundamental form to handle almost all of those. Uh, I mean, actually, it's all of those. Okay, It's the fundamental to handle all of those problems where we have a solid to calculate the volume of a solid that's created by rotating a region around a given axis. Right there. It's accumulation. And that's how we get the volume. And that's how, like I said, you know, we, it's, it is extremely important now that you have to view this video lesson after you have already viewed and understand what a definite integral is because we use definite integral as a as a, a as a tool to find that volume. Okay, all right. So so now that's enough uh, general talk right there, general discussion. I pointed out a plan and I pointed out the the imagination we should put into our mind when we see a picture like that. Okay. So now let's really get into that uh, actual problem. Allow me to erase this space, all of this drawing here. And then, now before I really get into the, the actual example, the plan here again, I'm seeing this video lecture here, particularly here as part two, where even though I'm introducing a slightly new method, but uh, I'm seeing that as a part two, okay, as of uh, the earlier, as a, in conjunction with the earlier method where I call that the this method. So here, Yes, many textbooks call that the washer's method. I will get to that the formal name a little later on right there. Okay, but now again, it's very similar to the video lecture in part one right there. I'm only gonna give about one or two examples in the lecture here. Okay, and then outside of this lecture, I am going to produce uh, multiple examples, uh, multiple additional examples or supplementary examples uh, de depending on how you want to see it. Students of mine who learn from me or public viewers who are learning from me, you are not required to, to view all examples outside of this 
you know, the particular lecture right here because I believe the two examples here should be enough to point out the generality. However, if you view through all of my examples, all of my additional examples, and there are always, there's an unlimited number of problems out there. So there's no instructor that can cover all examples out there. Okay, but I will put in as many examples as I can, but completely outside of this lecture in, in separate video clips like that. Okay, so the, you are more than welcome to view. The more you view, the, the more ex experience, you, experience you, you can build on, on your own skill in, in terms of uh, calculating these volumes. And specifically for this method right here, using the, using the washers, okay? All right, so now, once you've had all that, let me now call that example one right here, okay? And so, now here's my wording of the problem. Find the volume, okay, of the solid generated by rotating. Now allow me to be specifically clear. In, in first in line, by rotating, rotating about or around, about, around. the x-axis. Okay, so this is your axis of rotation right here. But we are rotating around the x-axis, the region. The region enclosed, or sometimes the problem says bounded. Same meaning. Okay, the region enclosed or bounded by the following given curves right here. So how about I'm going to have a curve. So however the equation is given here, is, I only need you to see that as an equation, and we will learn to decide uh, how to. Re we will learn whether we, we must uh, rewrite the equation. The, it all depends on our needs of the problem. Okay, and so he, here's our in, uh, enclosed region. It's, it's enclosed by, there's a, a curve here. It could be a curve, it could be a line. How about y equals uh, one fourth x squared plus one. That's one line right there, that's one curve. There's another curve. And y equals uh, 2, okay? And now, of course, uh, between x equals 2 and x equals uh, 4, okay? And so, that is the region right there. All right, so now, and that's the end of the description of our problem. We want to find the volume of the solids that's generated by rotating around the x-axis, this region right here, enclosed by these four curves. Okay, so find the volume. And all of that description right here, Nowhere in this example is asking us to make a sketch, but now at this point you have a clear sense that a visual picture, I mean a visual description of the, of the region here would be an excellent idea, or having, having an actual sketch of this, even though the problem did not ask us, okay? So have a visual illustration of that picture right here, have a visual the, the look, right, at that picture, so have a sketch, and then the, the sketch will help us uh, Will, will help us improve our imagination right there, and it will help us decide a lot of situation in the problem. Okay, so now I'm going to move over to my other board right there. And actually, before we swing to the other board right there to have a hand sketch of the region, then let's use the computer software, the computer, the, the graphing calculator with decimals here to get the precise looking of the two curves, of, of all the curves together actually, and then to find out well, how or what our uh, enclosed area or enclosed region looks like first. And then we are going to be able to uh, see what region needs to be rotated around the x-axis as described in this problem. All right, so first of all, these are the, the curves right here. So I have one curve being the 1 fourth x squared plus 1. 
which is this nice parabolic shape right here. And the other curve is y equals 2, which is this horse flat horizontal line. Okay, and now these are the two the other boundary right here, x equals 2 and x equals 4. Okay, so these are the two boundary as uh, the two uh, other curves that as described in, in our wording description of our problem. See, it's, we want the region enclosed by that given curve, that given curve, and between these two, x equals 2 and x equals 4 like that. So now once again back on the, the graphing calculator with decimals. Uh, so in this way right here, once we see the curve, then the shaded area, the, the, the enclosed region must be inside of that little space here. It's this space right here between between the two vertical lines and between uh, the up and down curve here. So that region here needs to be the one shaded. So here's our shading right here. And once we clearly identified our region that we're doing the rotation, now I'm going to just simply the hide away all of the, the extra part of the curve, only keep the part of the curve that being uh, the trapped or being bounded between the four curves. So x equals 1 really is, I mean x equals 2 really is the point where the two curves meet together and x equals 4 is this boundary, y equals 2 gives me this boundary, and this is, I guess, I mean, this is really y equals 1 fourth x squared plus 1 right here. And that's how, so it's not really a triangle, it's, a, it's a slightly bent here in this boundary of the curve, but that's the region that we will be rotating. Okay, and so, once we understand about our, rotate, uh, our uh, ro rotated region, our region to be rotated, Let's swing over to look at the, let's look at the, the 3D version of that. So here we go. There's a 3D and clearly speaking, this is not a triangle. You can see that it has some bent nature right there. Okay. And so now in this way, I am going to show a demonstration of rotating this region around the x-axis. All right. So now the x-axis is here. Okay. I'm going to take that region and ro rotating it. And let's see what kind of picture we're going to create, we're going to have. All right. So now... Now there we go, okay, and as I'm rotating it, we're creating for ourselves some a, a solid that looks like the shape of a speaker, but now it's not a solid speaker, it's not like a, a, a speaker where it's solid through, we actually have some empty space, you can see some white here, meaning if you, we're placing our eyes here, looking into this, then we have empty space right here, okay, and so let me change the view a little bit so that you can see even better, okay, so I can... Now I can turn this away or turn this. So now we can see more, it's more convincing that we have empty space here. Okay, and so the, the solid part is only the green part inside here. All right. And then looking from the side view where the this, this space in between is completely empty, but th there's our uh, rotated region and it's rotated around the axis right there. All right, so now I'm going to get back to the, the original view right there. All right, so now... On my other board, allow me to only draw the part of the the part of the region where it's just after we have identified the region. So it looks like we had this piece of a bent curve right here, okay, and it, it's going from x equals two to x equals four. Okay? So it's not a triangle, but it's this bounded region. Okay, and I'm going to use uh, the slanted line right here to, to do the shading for my region. And that region there is going to be rotated around the x-axis. So the x-axis is what's chosen in a problem. Okay, and so we don't decide. I mean, in, in these problems, we don't decide what axis to rotate. The problem decides for us. And, w and we just, from that description that the problem rotates this region around the x-axis, we're going to just go with the, coming up with the suitable the, the work, the suitable, suitable kinds of accumulation to calculate that volume. Okay, and so now, here's how we can start uh, doing the work right here. So fundamentally, as I was indicating earlier, in the general discussion I've had earlier, then now we're going to draw the rotation axis is here, the x-axis. And so now I need to think about placing stripe or at least place a stripe through the region and then make the stripe perpendicular with the rotation axis. And then as I draw that stripe through the region and to hit 
the rotation axis, then some part of the stripe will be outside of the region. And that's why I'm dotting it. I'm dotting it here. Okay, we're dotting it here. So some part of the stripe is going to be outside of the region. And then, so now once we rotate it, then the part, the solid part of the stripe, some point on that stripe will be closer to the rotation axis, and the, there's another point that's further out. Okay, and so now rotating that stripe right here, the further the further point on the stripe right here, and further I mean further away from the rotation axis, will create a the outer disk for us. Okay, and then the inner, the closer point on the stripe, closer to the to the rotation axis. Once rotated, it will give us the inner circle. Okay. So there's that solid piece of the stripe once rotated down here. Okay. And then of course again we are placing our eyes. We are placing our eyes to look straight into that uh, axis of rotation being the x axis in this case right here. Alright. And then and then once we've had that, once again now we recognize clearly it's a it's a it's a washer right here. The the cross surface, the, the picture, the rotated picture right in front of us, it's a it's a washer, okay? And then that same fundamental I brought up earlier. For each washer or for each cross section here, we need to do, we need to find a cross section area. Find a cross section area. Then multiply that cross section area with the thickness. There it will get us the volume for one washer right here. Okay, and so now, and then we're going to be accumulating all of those uh, washer volumes from a start to an end. Okay, from a start to an end. So now let's really, in my personal experience, I have already uh, pointed it, it out throughout the lecture in, in the disk method. I'm using that exact same uh, personal experience here, and I would like to pass it down to, to anyone studying this from me right here. I recommend, in this work right here, I recommend nailing down as first step or first stage right here. I recommend finding out, uh, deciding the thickness right here, or recognizing or realizing the thickness. It's right in the picture. It's right in the picture. In the way how our washer here is being placed. See? So when we're looking straight at it, the picture is as following. There's the outer circle. There's the outer circle, I mean inner circle, and then there's the outer circle, okay? But the thickness is here. So there's the thickness, all right? And then the, the two circles here are concentric. Empty space is here, the area we find is in here. All right, and then the x-axis is coming through that way. So in this way right here, it makes perfect sense that now step one, our thickness is quickly recognized, easily recognized to be the dx expression. It's just the, the infinitesimally small change in, on, in respect to the, the x-axis here. That's because that's the way how we place our curtain cross sections, okay? So that's the thickness. And so now the next step here is one we came, came up with our thickness here which will become the importantly the d expression the differential expression in our integral problem then that now will tell us and and in the meanwhile the integral will slowly become as following well we have not found a cross section area so let's leave it the same okay cross section area so let's leave it like that but thickness now is dx for clear so that importantly means that consequently will lead us into we have to derive our cross section area here as a function of, uh, of x to make the main variable of this function here consistent with the variable indicated in this d expression. So making it every, making it completely connected with the, the understanding we have had previously when I first started out teaching about uh, the, uh, what an integral is. Okay, so now in that way, and of course, we're also waiting for deciding what our start is, where our start of this accumulation is, and where our ending of the accumulation is. Okay, and so 
Now let's let's hunt for the step two over here. Let's get into step two where we're looking for a way to generalize our cross section area. Cross section. That's how we're calling it. Cross section area. Okay. Cross section area. It's thickness we already found. Cross section area. So I'm gonna erase this picture because now it's so clear about the the thickness. But now I'm going to draw a different picture. Imagine if we're looking at the picture directly facing it. Okay, then the, the x-axis this time is coming out like that. The x-axis is coming out like that. The solid part of the stripe is giving us this area. That's the part right there. Okay, and these two are meant to be concentric circle. And uh, this it's empty space in here and this center right here of the two the, the common center of the two concentric circles here is where is where that x axis is going through okay so now in the way how it is all we have to do is figure out a way to calculate to calculate the area being shaded here the, the area of that washer here okay so now i'm going to use a little bit of red ink right here to indicate but Finding this area is actually a quite a simple problem. Any high school geometry student can handle this. All we have to do is be able to figure out the area of the larger circle, the area of the larger circle. But see, area of the larger circle is done by what? Radius, of larger radius square times pi, or pi times larger radius square. So allow me to introduce how about the, this larger radius, radius, I'm gonna call that capital R, okay? And then, once we've had the area of the larger radius, I'm going to take away the area of the smaller radius, I mean of the smaller circle with the smaller radius. So how about lowercase r is here, okay? So lowercase letter r, that's the smaller radius. Okay. So now the idea now generally area of the cross section is a larger circle okay minus smaller circle that's the fundamental we can see right now it's the larger circle and I mean larger circle area minus the smaller circle area okay but larger circle area now er er allow me to erase that in, in put that in the actual formula for any circle. It's pi times radius square, but larger circle is with radius capital R. So pi times big R square. Smaller circle is, uh, smaller circle is pi times uh, the radius of the smaller circle, which is lowercase r. So pi big R square minus pi lower r, lowercase r square, okay? And so now, we definitely need to get back to our picture here and decide in the way how it is right now, the larger radius is how much space that is or how much height that is from, because right now we're currently treating the x axis as our the rotation axis. So the, the larger radius, big R is here. This big space right here is big R. Okay, but wait a minute. That means we recognize this larger radius here as a, the function output for, because this is where x is, this is an x value at any x value. This looks like we can treat that curve here as a function of, of x, okay? And why treating that function as a function of x? Because uh, we want to make sure that the f all of the functions here to, together eventually will be in respect to the x variable indicated here previously, okay? And so the height here, the height here can be regarded as a function of x. So that output right here. So what function was this? The curve was y equals 1 fourth x squared plus 1. And perfect, this is already as a function of x right here. So that means the, the larger radius right here, the, the bigger radius has to be, in the way how I'm seeing it, 1 fourth x squared plus 1 all square, that's larger radius square times pi right here. That's the area at any x value on this, along with this x axis right here. That's the, the, that's the, the radius, that's the larger radius or the area of the larger 
circle with radius big bigger radius okay at that particular instance of x and now I'm going to subtract the smaller area. So smaller area is from where it is uh, from that same x at value, but where it hits to the closer point. So I talked about the further and the closer. See, the further and the closer defines for us the bigger radius and the smaller radius. Okay? And so the bigger radius, in this case here, you can a lot of time people or some other math professors or textbook call this the further point here is giving us the outer, the outer radius or the outer boundary and we use that outer boundary here as a function of x in this case and now the, the inner boundary is here we also, the inner boundary has an inner radius right here and, and create an inner radius and the inner boundary here also must be expressed as a function of x but now gladly this curve right here it's just a simple curve y equals 2 so it's a constant function it's a constant function y equals 2 okay y equals 2 and that's our constant radius here for the inside curve like that so now it's going to be pi times a 2r square but ladies and gentlemen now we have all certain expressed our area of each cross surface as a washer over here of each cross section here as a washer okay and so it's bigger area larger circle area minus a smaller circle area right there. that's how we have the area of the cross section okay and so now I'm on my way to fill it into this curtain formula okay so now we know what we need a, a dx strictly for sure a dx is all the way out here but now as far as the the area of the cross section I need pi times uh, 1 fourth x squared plus 1 r square and minus pi times uh, uh, 2 r square okay so we're keep getting there in terms of having our problem set up all right and so now after we've had all that uh, enough information sadly I have to erase all this space all of this work uh, written down here so that I can have more space for my next step for here so start and end in the way how we're placing so I said earlier that bring as much things that you've learned from the disk method to here. So the, at the end of my lecture, my, my lecture earlier for the disk method, and I said when our rotation, when our solid created by rotation here is being placed sideways, or being, or it came out because we're rotating around the horizontal axis, like this case right here, then we're going to be accumulating. The start is on the left, and the ending of the accumulation is at the right. So start is on the left and it's at the right so on the left right here it looks like that's the the given value x equals 2 is here and, and at the end of the accumulation that's right there is at x equals 4 so now we clearly have a an integral setup right here it's accumulation of all these uh, little volumes of the washers from 2 to 4 all right so now ladies and gentlemen we have completely we have found our volume setup as a an integral for our the, the ready for our precise volume of this speaker like but how low space in between like the how low space in the middle okay and so now in that way well then we can just start getting the work done right here I have a common factor of pi right here I can pull it out front okay so that volume here is a pi that integral there becomes pi and integral from 2 to 4 okay and now I'm gonna start foiling out that term and, and turn that square into the its actual number. So now I'm looking at 1 over 16 x to the fourth okay, plus 1 uh, 1 half x squared plus 1 but minus 4 so all together with the other term combined. I'm gonna have I'm going to be looking at minus 3 all together here. That's now complete our integral. That's one integral. Okay? And so now, fundamental theorem of calculus says all we do is just simply, all we do to handle this definite integral, just simply find the antiderivative. Okay? I'm going to have to adjust my spacing here so that I can have space enough for the next step. All right, so pi 
and then multiply with 1 over 80 x to the fifth plus 1 6 x cubed minus 3x okay and that now is going to be evaluated from 2 to 4 according to the fundamental theorem of the calculus okay and so I am going to write down the, the plugging in step like that the step where I, we substitute the value 2 to 4 over here but I'm going to sw immediately swing over to the computer station to get the, the, the actual final calculation right there so it's now going to be pi times uh, 180 I mean 1 over 80 times 4 to the fifth power plus 1 6 times 4 to the third power minus 3 times 4 okay and then now I'm going to subtract again there's pi Right, and then 1 over 80 times 2 to the fifth power plus you know, 1 6 times 2 cubed minus 3 times uh, 2. All right, and that completes our, our substitution work right there. And now I'm going to quickly step away for a final calculation. All right, and so now with completing out all of that work right here, our final calculation, allow me to swing to the other board. The final answer for this volume, for this solid right here, the final volume for that, for this solid, is found as V equal, volume equal 236 pi over 15. 236 pi over 15. Okay, so that is our final answer. Okay, so that's how it's done right here. A couple checkpoints, just like how we were doing that in the disk methods right here, that the final answer is expected to be, now here is an application problem. Okay, so the final answer here needs to be a positive answer, simply because here we're looking for a volume. It makes no sense to have a negative volume. Okay, and it's not fun that we come out with a, a, uh, a volume zero, so no, almost no problems uh, the, for finding volumes giving us an, an answer where the volume is zero. Okay, so that's why having a positive answer for the volume is completely consistent with the work right here. If you for any reason end up with a negative answer, go back and check your work. If you end up with a zero, also check your work right there. But now, did we do the calculation correctly? Did I do all the computation correctly? It all depends on how I carry through my algebra here. Okay, and so in case anyone viewing along with this video recognize any of my arithmetic area, I mean arithmetic error here, that please forgive me on that. But that you know, none of that those errors here will would lead to the tremendous change in our final answer. Okay. So the, this is the, the big picture of how we get that done right here. And that, this is the end of uh, example number one. Yeah. So we found the, sol the volume of that solid here is uh, 236 pi over 15. Okay? But admittedly, I haven't had time to carefully uh, 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 do a, a careful check on my final answer here yet in terms of the computational part. Okay? All right, and now we can call that example two. So, as I step out from right here, it remains exactly, pretty much the exact same problem. Almost everything in the wording. Okay, that problem we have done in, in example one, now I'm going to call that example two. But here, allow me to change only one piece of information. The exact same, I'm, I purposely keep the exact same enclosed region right here, but I'm changing the rotation axis over to the, the y axis. So in that way, allow me to write red ink right here to catch your attention. We're pretty much looking at the exact same enclosed region. There's that curve here, there's this curve here, and then there's that x equals 2 between x equals 2 and x equals 4. Okay, there's that exact curve, but, and now I call that example 2. And in this example, 
we want to find, I mean we want to uh, rotate that region around the y axis, the vertical axis there. Okay, so now again let's have a look. And so it saves us some effort in terms of uh, re-sketching the, the, the region because it's the same region. It's the exact same region. But now we're going to have to trigger our imagination in a different way here. And that's why it, it's extremely important. I, I highly recommend you look at to start triggering up your imagination. And I already had this advice uh, back in those earlier lectures where I was you know, de delivering about the, the disk method. Yeah. Okay, so now let's look at the, the picture here. All right, so it's the same, exact same region. So there is no need to uh, reinvent everything from scratch by seeing all the four full curves. But in case you do, you, anyone do need to see it, then here we go, x equals two and x equals four. Okay, this line here horizontally, that line here is the line y equals two, and this curve here is the nice that that nice function uh, y equals uh, one fourth x squared plus one. Okay, but now allow me to hide away all the, 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 the extra unnecessary details right there. We only need to focus on that uh, region being bounded by the four curves uh, together. Okay, but now let's look, let's turn over to the, 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 the 3D view so that we can see how, what kind of solid it will be create for us once we're rotating this region around the Y axis. Okay, and that's how we are doing that for example too. So here's, here we go, here's our region right here. But now this time we are rotating it around the Y axis. All right, so here's the Y axis. Rotation orientation does not matter, okay? So now I'm gonna be rotating it. And there we're creating for ourselves that look. Now this is about halfway throughout our rotation already. And you can start imagining what kind of solid that is. So the empty space is here, and there's, see that's white space, and then this, this part right here, it looks green, but that's because, you know, that's the best the, the software can do right there. But this part here is completely empty, okay? The part, that's, uh, the part that is solid is here. It's in that, uh, you know, almost like a triangle shape, but it's bent here, so it's bent here, okay? So now I'm gonna complete my, I'm gonna complete my solid right there, okay? So we have empty space inside here, and then there's a solid space. Okay, the solid space is in between this part here. All right, so that's how it's done right here. That's how it's, it's uh, that's the kind of uh, picture that we're having. All right, so now, I'm again, I am going to swing to the other board and make a hand sketch of that same exact picture again, and we're gonna start putting up, we're gonna start uh, pushing our imagination. Okay, we're gonna start triggering up our imagination right here. And then we're gonna come up with plans. All right, so I'm gonna draw this time, I'm gonna draw to have more space here. So it's kind of like that, that's the idea. Okay, and this is the line y equals two, this is that curve right here. So this curve is the one y equals one fourth x squared plus one. Is it a function of x or is it a function of y? We will have to redetermine that later. Right now it's only an equation that gives this part of the boundary. Okay, and then this is x equals four right here. X equals two is right there already. And this line right here is y equals two. Okay, so now here's our region being shaded. So now I'm doing that shading part right there. Okay, and so as you have seen already on the com computer illustration right there, the, the demonstration with the computer, then this time since our rotation axis is chosen, the problem chose that for us, is chosen to be on the y, around the y axis. Okay, allow me to draw the y axis a little bit shorter down so I can put my eyes up here. Okay, so we're placing our eyes to look right down so the, the, the rotation axis come up, comes up this way right here and all of the rotation goes around us and facing that, facing us, facing our eyes right there. Okay. And so now, this time, and the same rule of thumb, the same generality we have been doing ever since the disk method, we have to put our, we have to place any of our stripes here to be perpendicular. So we place our stripes through the region and make sure that our stripe is perpendicular with the, with the rotation axis. And that's how I'm drawing it. And now again, I'm making dots here. I'm dotting our stripe when it comes to that part being outside of the region. So any stripe perpendicular to, 
And so the rule, the, the generality we see here is any stripe that's perpendicular to the, the rotation axis, in this situation we're currently learning, then there's going to be some part of a stripe inside the region. There's solid stripe there, and then there's dotted stripe right here. Okay, even though it's on the same stripe. Okay, all right, so now there's the stripe, and imagine now, in our imagination, one's rotated. Inner circle is here. The, the, the dotted stripe or the empty space create that inner circle for us. All right, and then the solid part of the stripe, once rotated, it gives us the larger circle like that. All right, and so now each stripe like that, this time, just like how in, in the way how I'm seeing it. All right, so now once you've got the picture down, then clearly our eyes right here, in front of our eyes, we're seeing two concentric circles that create a washer here. This is the area we want to find. That's the area we want to find. Okay, and then I will get back to that later. So now, back to that fundamental I have pointed out earlier. Any stripe here has a, it's a cross section, it has a thickness. There's a thickness being how thick or how thin this stripe is. Because we're placing our disc, I mean we're placing our washer this way. That's the idea right there. Okay, the y-axis comes out right through the washer. Okay, and then here's the thickness. That's the idea. Okay, and so keep that in mind right now. So, but in the end, the cross section recognized as a washer, but it has an area, and then the disc here, I mean, I mean the, the, the washer here has a thickness. And so now again, for each washer, I am going to multiply the cross section, cross section area, right? cross section area multi multiplied with thickness. That will give me volume of one washer. Okay, so there's washer. All right, area of the washer is on the top face right here, and this is the thickness. So that's volume of one washer, and we will be accumulating from some start. And we need to eventually identify where the start of that accumulation is, and where is the ending of that accumulation is. Okay, so it's always that fundamental that uh, we're working it with. Okay, and I have introduced this back in ever since the disk method. Okay, and so now again, in that same personal experience I have uh, mentioned earlier, and now I will keep reminding anyone, because that's the, the, the experience I've been relying on so closely throughout all my years doing this kind of problem. Right there. Ever since I was a student, to those days I became a teacher and keep you know, working my way up and using that same experience that I, I was, you know, mentioning it earlier. First step, easier for me at least, find the thickness. And the thickness comes right out from this. Because uh, in the way how I'm seeing my washer this time, in the way how I'm seeing my washer this time, time, then in the way how we place our washer, then the thickness here is the infinitesimally small change in y. And so that's why now in, the, in our understanding of infinitesimally small change right here, then that's the differential dy right there. Okay, so now immediately, so as a breaking down step right here, see, step one, what is the thickness? That's dy, that's how we're listing it out. And I always recommend, recommend writing down that list. Okay, even though some instructor require, I don't require my student to sketch things down like this, but it's extremely useful. I do that personally. Okay, so even if you don't decide, but always put in your thought process, that thickness process comes down first. In your thought process, that thickness step right there comes down first. So now once you decide your thickness, then the integral becomes whatever for the cross section area. Admittedly, we haven't found that yet. Let's leave it there. Cross section area, leave the same way it here, but this is now has to be a dy. Okay, and so now once we realize that we need to put a d, the d expression here being the dy, then that gives us a goal or a purpose that 
hey, this cross-section area, we have to find a way to express the cross-section area here as a function of y. Okay, we're turning, that's just the way how it is. We want our main variable here in this function, the, the function that, that regulates or the function that determines the cross-section area to be con the main variable there to be consistent with this variable indicated in the d expression here. Okay, and so now here's how we're finding out our cross-section area. Step two over here, or stage number two over here. See, each, so now I, let me change to the, the picture where we're looking straight down at the, each cross-section. So again, that same rule. The picture we have here comes out from two concentric circles here. There's the outer circle, okay. There's the outer circle where it has a bigger radius. Let's call that capital R. There's the inner circle with the smaller radius. It makes sense the way it is that way. Okay, this is lowercase r, little r. Okay, so big r, little r. Okay, big r, little r. And then the difference between the two areas, outer circle. Okay, so now I'm on my way to, as a thought process again, for cross section. For cross section area, here's how we're finding it. Okay. Larger circle minus smaller circle. That's what it is. Larger circle minus the smaller circle. And the larger circle, and when I'm saying larger circle minus smaller circle, I mean the area of the larger circle minus the area of the smaller circle. And so now quickly that will become for us, mathematically speaking, the pi big R square minus the pi smaller r square. Okay, the pi big R square minus the pi small r square. So now we need to stay even closer with our curves. Big R is determined by from where the further point of the boundary. So the, in this case right here, see, one stripe, what we placed, like I said, in, back in what I said earlier, now it's, it's all coming in places right here. Anywhere that you place a stripe, cross, crossing through, I mean going through your region and cross through a boundary that to go to that, uh, to, to stop at that uh, rotation axis, then the crossing point of the point where the, the, the stripe crosses through the boundary, that point is the closer point, which will give us the the inner circle. The inner circle is from the closer point to the center. The outer circle is from the outer point, the further point to the center of rotation, to the axis of rotation. So in this case, let's find out, let's find out what big R is, because big R comes out from being the distance between the rotation axis and the further point. And the further point is on this outer boundary. And this outer boundary here what is this one right here? It's just that constant space being, see, the, the, the problem description told us earlier that it was uh, x equals 4. Okay, x equals 4. It's a vertical line. Okay, so x equals 4. So now in that way, this is the further boundary. So that means in my problem right here, it really was pi times the radius 4, but all square. See, because Anywhere here, if we place a stripe, even if we place a stripe here, okay, that's four, that's four, they're all four, so the outer radius is four. So pi times four squared. That's the area of the larger circle. The area of the larger circle, big R is four. Okay, and now I'm gonna erase that uh, optional stripe here. This is making my picture just more confusing. Okay, so now let's find out about the smaller area. So the smaller area gets short or gets longer depending on where we put our y value. See, obviously, anywhere we put our y value here, then it's a, we have a different length of our inner radius. I mean, our closer point, even though it's closer, because in a sense that on the same stripe here, then it's closer compared to the outer uh, point right here. But now it's it, the the, that closer point itself, it's, it's changes its distance from 
from the rotation axis out to that closer point right there. So that's why now I can, I can see that I have to express this boundary here as a function of, of y. As a function of y, because think about it, in the end, if we're putting it all together, this function is already constant, but then the other term, it ha we have to put it all so that this function is in terms of, of y. It's a function of y. So this curve right here, initially given as y equals 1 fourth x squared. y equals 1 fourth x squared. But now we need to express this curve as a function of y. In the way how it looks right now, it's expressed in terms of x. We need to re-express this. It's all due to the fact that, all due to the fact that we, we decided that our, we realized, we recognized that our d, d expression there is a dy. Okay, so now we need to re-express this curve, the exact same curve there, but we have to re-express that as a function of y, depending on every y value that we place here, anywhere we place our stripe here as a y value, then we're going to have a different length from here out to there. It's a function output of a function of in terms of y. Okay, so let's do a little bit of algebra. Okay, let's do a little bit of algebra. So how about I'm going to swing back to this board of mine right here and take any little bit of space right here. How about this little space right there? Okay, our function is y equals one fourth x squared plus one. Algebraically, we can subtract subtract one from both sides. That gives us y minus one equals one fourth x squared. And we can multiply both sides by 4, giving us 4y minus 4 equals x squared. We're getting closer. And then we now can solve for, we can solve this function here. We can solve this for x. But remember, anytime we're solving this, we have to take the square root operation, and which will give us two separate roots. So how about, allow me to write like this. I'm a little bit cheating with my viewers here, but I'm, I'm so turning the equation around at the same time and then take the square root. So about, allow me now to take the x on, write the x on the left hand side. It's just personally I'm a little more comfortable with writing the main variable we're solving for on the left hand side. So x here equals plus and minus square root. That's what I'm trying to remind right there. Anytime we're algebraically solving an equation that involves uh, taking square root of both sides, we have to do the plus and minus square root. 4y minus 4. Okay. But now we need to decide. There's only one curve. This is obviously two separate expression. Which expression here is correct for our picture? Which expression there is correct for our picture? Now, it looks like the, the region we're drawing here is completely on the right-hand side. All the x values are positive. See, positive x value. The x axis is going this way, and the, the picture looks completely to the right-hand side of the y-axis here. The y-axis is here. Does that give anyone here viewing the video lesson a clue? Okay, that means that means we are going to choose x equals positive. This is the choice that we're going for: positive square root of four y minus four. Positive square root of four y minus four. Okay, so now we have come to deciding. Hey, our curve here should be expressed as x equals positive square root of four y minus four. But now at least we have successfully turned our curve here as an expression in terms of y, as a function in terms of y, at least in that piece. In that piece, then every distance from, from the center of rotation L to, to that point on the curve right there, it has to be, that distance there can be represented as a function output on this function right here, square root of 4y minus 4. So many ways to explain that. Okay, but now, seeing that as the radius, seeing that as the radius of the rotation, then, the area of the inner circle, the area of the inner circle is going to be pi times radius. Radius now is the square root of 4y minus 4. Okay. 4y minus 4 all square. That's the area of the smaller circle. And now we subtract out the 2. Okay, and now we subtract out the 2. So pi times 4 squared minus pi times all that square right there. But now the whole thing here is one function in terms of y that's ready for being placed here. That's the function to generate the cross-section area at any instant y value. Okay, at any instant y value. So now we are ready to put it in. Okay, and let's think about it. This here is the same as a pi, I mean a 16 pi. 
Or we can also factor out a pi in front right here, and then that, that term right here, once, uh, square, the, uh, once taking square, the square will cancel with the square root, giving us simply just 4y minus 4. That's actually our expression that generates the, the area of any cross section. As we are looking at our washers here from the, from, uh, from, from, from the top down right here, from the top view right there, or in other words, as a function in terms of, in terms of y. Okay, and so now let's put that in here. All that extra information been here long enough. So dy is the thickness. Now we're looking at uh, pi times, uh, or how about uh, allow me to put the pi in front right here because they all have a common factor of pi. So pi, and then now in parentheses, uh, 16 minus, and I should have used uh, brackets, okay? 16 because 4 squared minus, so now I'm looking at uh, 4y minus 4. All right, and, and I had that simply because it's already canceled out the square between that, or we can we can still remain with the root here and have the square there. That you, that's your choice, right there. Pretty much anyone's choice of how you can derive that. But I rather stay with having the square first so that people understand ultimately that it's the, the radius square. Right there. Okay, and so now, in what I'm doing here, in what I'm doing here, so. The start of this accumulation is from, see, I had, once again, I had this explanation back in the disk method lecture, and now I can explain that again here. Our solid here came out as a consequence or as a result of generating, of rotating this region around the y-axis, around the y-axis. So the, the washers are being stacking up from bottom up, see? So we think about accumulation as a stacking up of those washers right there. Okay, the stacking up of those washers. And so in that way right here, the accumulation here start would be from low, that start, and it is ending at the, the high. So or from bottom to the top, right there. that's start to, to end right here. Start at the bottom and ending up at the, at the top. And so we can now start doing a quick little calculation here. Let's reconstruct our picture. Okay, the area is like that. We know that this low end here has already been, must be already y equals 2. That's the low end, the bottom end of that integral. What about the top end right here? The top end is where our curve meets with uh, x equals 2. So x equals 2, this is x equals square root. This is x equals square root of 4y minus 4. So now I'm going to equate square root of 4y minus 4 to equals, uh, to equals Actually here, this is x equals, this line is x equals 4. So I want x equals 4 equals with x equals square root of 4y minus 4. We want that to happen right there. Solve this equation. So squaring both sides, I'm going to end up with 4y minus 4 equals 16. Squaring both sides of the equation will clear out the square root for us. And then from this, I can quickly solve that. It has to be now adding 4 to the other side and divide both sides by 4. I mean, just adding 4 to both sides, we're looking at 4y equals 20. And now dividing both sides by 4, okay, now the answer comes clear. That's the upper limit right there. y equals 5. y equals 5. That's our upper limit, okay? And so now from the bottom up of our accumulation, here's how things go. And now allow me to erase all of this extra work right here because I've kept it there long enough. All right, so now y equals 2 to y equals 4. That's our accumulation. And now that's the, the complete setup of our integral ready for action and ready to find the, the actual the final value right here. And so now we can algebraically clear out square root and, and I can also pull that uh, constant term, I mean that uh, constant coefficient in front. So our integral now becomes, uh, and now we just mainly focus on the integral and now we definitely need to know what a definite integral is. Okay, and we need to know how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to handle this. So I'm going to algebraically first rewrite the expression here. It's an accumulation from 2 to 4, 16 minus 4y, but plus 4. Because once we clear out that square root, it's minus here, minus 4y, but plus 4 over here. So actually, allow me to do two steps in one. So now it's going to be 20 minus 4y. 
with a dy. Okay, and this is simple enough. So the in the next step, we're gonna go with the fundamental theorem of calculus. It gives me pi antiderivative of that is going to be 20y minus uh, 2 y square. And we need to evaluate this from 2 to 4. Like that. Okay, and so now I'm going to once again, I'm going to show just the step where I substitute these two limits into that, and then I'm going to step away for, to use my calculator for, for you know, doing the actual calculation. So it's going to be pi times uh, so now 20 times 4 minus 2 times uh, 4 square. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract again. And then here it's a pi. Okay, and then here 20 times uh, 2 minus 2 times uh, okay, 2 times uh, 2 all square. All right, so that's how I'm substituting values in, substituting the, the upper value, the upper limits into the antiderivative and then subtract the same antiderivative evaluated at the, the lower limits. Okay, so all right, so final answer came out for me 16. Pi. All right, so that's my final volume of this solid right here. And I said it in the beginning of the, 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 the video lesson. The, it could be the same, it, and it is obviously here throughout the two examples. It's a, it, throughout the two examples. It's the exact same bounded region, but rotating around the x axis, like in example one, and rotating around, around the y axis, like in this example here do not necessarily give the, the equal amount of volume. It's not the exact same shape. It's not the exact same shape, okay? It's not the same solid right here. So the solid we just now came up with is a 16 pi. The same region here, but rotating around the x-axis gave us a solid with volume 236 pi over 15, if I remember correctly from example one right there, okay? But now another, so back in this problem again, another checkpoint is volume positive, Yes, it is positive because the problem here is a volume problem. It makes no sense to have a negative volume, okay? And then it's not fun to have a volume being zero. So those are the two checkpoints right there. But other than that, how accurate is our calculation? It all depends on how we perform the steps. So it's, it's on anyone's uh, responsibility to check your steps right here. I might make my uh, arithmetic error here as well. So the, if you recognize any of that, forgive me on that. But that should not alter any of our the structure of the problem here at all, okay? All right, so now I come at uh, this final remark here before we completely uh, done and, and, uh, and leave this particular lecture right here. But So yes, the method we've been doing so far, primarily what you've seen throughout the two examples is that we're accumulating or we're stacking up or we're accumulating sideways the volume of those washers, okay? The volume of washers. And so that's why in that way right here, yes, many textbooks and many the mathematicians and, ma and many math professors refer to that method right there. We essentially learn, we just now learn being regarded as the washer method, okay? It's the washer method because simply, again, we, if we're looking at the cross section, the cross section is in the shape of a washer, not just a solid disk, not only a solid disk, but it's a puncher disk. It has an empty space here, and the, each disk has a bigger radius for that's producing the larger circle, and there's a smaller radius to produce uh, the smaller circle, and the two circles here are concentric right here, okay? And so in that way over here, so that's how, that's why we're calling that the washer method, and then, but ultimately, you have seen the disk method earlier, and the washer method here. Now I really have to emphasize, the washer method is only an extension just an extension, okay, of the, the this method. So this method here, instead of having a, a, an empty puncher in the middle, no, we just have the disk being solid. And then as the, the, as the region evolves more challenging than, you know, as we rotate the region, the stripes giving us the, the kind of uh, empty space in the middle over here. So just like that, allow me to describe the situation again. That uh, you see, back in this method, when I was saying that the one requirement, or just naturally the way it is, the, what makes it possible to use the this method was that 
at least the region we have there has to have one boundary being a straight edge boundary like for example in the demonstration I have for here one boundary being a straight edge and the rotation axis align exactly with that straight edge boundary right there then in that case uh, once we're rotating the stripe and further another characteristic of the this method is that the stripe does not cross any of the boundary okay and then that kind of problem that kind of simple area that kind of simple region stop there and then as the region becomes more complicated and as we try see so now we reach that kind of region right here where our regions where our region does not necessarily have any any more straight edge uh, boundary right here and uh, furthermore the, the the rotation axis no longer align with any of the straight edge boundary because there isn't okay then in that case the, another special special characteristic we recognize here being different with the disk methods this one here clearly gave us a gives us a, a washer method right here because see as we drawing a stripe if we're placing a stripe through the region then that stripe on its way to on its way making it to the rotation axis it has to so the stripe making its way its way to the, the rotation axis the stripe has to cross through has to cross through the the boundary or at least one boundary of our of our the region right here that see it has a cross right there and there's some part of the some part of the stripe has to be outside of the boundary and so that's why in, in that way right here rotating it will give us a a washer but in the end these are all I see these are all the, really the same methods washer is only an extension in a sense that it's still the it's still the cross section it's still the cross section what matters is whether the cross section is a disk or a cross section is being washer so disk is here this is washer okay disk or washer but these are all in the end any of these they are all just it's a cross section we're using cross section okay it's a cross section and so fundamentally throughout the two methods I've introduced from the in earlier part and up to this one here we were always looking for that see we were always looking for the cross section cross section area okay and then we multiply that with and now allow me to erase this name right here because I've left it there long enough we're multiplying with uh, thickness that gives us the volume for each cross section so cross section can be disk cross section can be washer okay and then once we and multiplying this will give us the volume of one thin cross section then we're gonna take the, the accumulation from a start to an end right here okay from a start to an end and that's how we was able to that's how we were able to come up with volume by accumulating this to get the volume of this kind of solid or just now we've learned that that's also the way how we calculated volume of a of the of those that generated by rotating a region a, a general region like this where we have a space between after we did the rotation like that okay and so now another remark to be mentioned here in case any of you really love reading the textbook okay and this I'm about to show you will also be displayed in many textbooks of yours right here I'm not saying that you shouldn't read textbook but that we read textbook and we find any formulas or we find anything but we got to understand where those formulas come out from and how useful it is for us otherwise if we only read textbook to hunt for formulas eventually there will be lots of formulas for you to remember okay and that's dangerous but so I still have to mention it here but uh, using it or not or, or if, if you decide to go with by memorizing the formula that's pretty much your choice right there for that but here specifically for the the this method I mean for the, the the washer method actually then in the case where the region here we have a curve this is a curve how about a curve one and then there is curve two that's that defines a region I select that simplest case again okay then in any way curve one and curve two curve one and curve two whatever whatever but so now if we are placing our if, we, if, if the problem is asking us to rotate around the x-axis if we are rotating the, the region here around the x-axis just like that okay and then some area again is uh, I mean I'm gonna have to dot that part of the area of the stripe right there okay that part of the stripe being outside of the region 
So in that case, where we're rotating around the x-axis, then yes, we recognize through example one, this was the case in example one, right there. we recognize through example one that usually when we're rotating a region like that, okay, around the x-axis and we're producing washer, then usually we have to see outer, that, that upper curve right here, see upper curve and lower curve, because the, if we're looking at that way and rotating the region around the x-axis, then it, the stripe is a vertical stripe, so vertical stripe cross through the lower curve and, 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 up, and, and stops at the upper curve. And so that's why we have to say, we, now we're going to have to think of the curve 1 here as uh, some function f of x right here. And then this curve 2 as some function g of x. So that means here it's pi times uh, f of x square minus f of x square minus g of x square and these two terms multiply with a common factor of pi right there and dx so this is the formula that you are you commonly see in many textbooks from a start to an end x equals a x equals b okay but so i write it down just just for you to know that everything i'm doing here and everything we're doing here is perfectly consistent with how the textbook has been doing it but I, I, I approach for my students here to, to hopefully have my students independent with, with formula because uh, at some point you will have a lot of formulas. So memorizing formula is, is not recommended at all in, when you're studying math. So all of that here came out from this, only one fundamental. Okay, and then see in that case, this is around the x-axis. And then now if we're rotating this picture around the the y-axis, curve 1 and curve 2, just those are the curve. But if we're rotating that around the y-axis, our stripes are going to look like this. Okay? And then the part that's outside of, this, of the, the area is there. Okay? So this is now going to be the further curve and the closer curve. This bottom one here, I mean, on, on the, when we were rotating that around the x-axis, then this curve here is the closer curve, lower curve. And then this is the upper curve. But now, if we're placing our stripe, it all depends on the picture. See, the picture is also the key telling, giving, giving us the, the, the direction right here. But so, it has to be a, a dy here in this case, right? The small chains to have the thickness, that has to be dy, whereas here it was uh, d, dx here. And that's why back in this formula I wrote down earlier, it's a dx. I'm not saying that rotating in different... Uh, uh, axis here gives us the same picture. Nope, it's not. But now, if we're rotating around the y-axis, then we have another formula. See, again, in this case right here, the outer curve is curve 2, but we have to express that. So, curve 2 right here, you can think of that as a function. How about the same curve, but you can express that as, uh, as some h of y. Okay, and then this same, this curve 1 right here, but now you can, you have to express that as a as a, how about uh, an S of Y right there, okay? And so now you, we're looking at same rule over here, I mean similar rule. See, I already confused myself right here. So just want to point out that sometimes just formula only is little dangerous, at least to me personally first. And then minus S of Y square but then the thickness here is dy. And then we have to know that starts here is some value on the y-axis so from some c to some d point right here. Okay, so accumulation from c to d. From c to d. Okay, but now more importantly, either way how I'm placing the stripe, see the major, the major characteristics being different from the disk method is that our stripe here, once it made its way to hit the, the, the rotation axis, either the x-axis or the y-axis, the stripe has to cross through one of the boundary and becomes and, and, and go outside of the boundary to hit to the rotation axis. And that's one of the key, key uh, difference between the, the washer methods here and, uh, and the, uh, 
the dish method that you've seen earlier. Okay, and these are the two formulas. I wrote it down, but uh, I myself never highly recommend uh, using the formulas at all because it's, there is too much formulas to remember at the end of at the, at the end of the day. Okay, and so after this general discussion right here, start looking for my other video lesson, and I will also. Um, We'll work through with, with, with many particular uh, problems in, in as many uh, different situations as possible. But in the end, uh, watching all of those or not is completely on your own uh, choice. Like, uh, if you feel like uh, whatever you've learned is, is already good enough for you to uh, either, of course, for my own class, I will also design an assignment problem. So if you feel like uh, within the, the, the examples in this lecture here is already enough for you to do all of your assignment problems, uh, feel free that to skip completely all of the other supplementary examples. Or if you feel like uh, you only need to watch about halfway through the, the, uh, throughout those examples outside of this lecture here, then uh, you are also welcome to do it, uh, so. All right.